Today we're in Old Town San Diego to visit probably the most requested location from the comment section of other videos, El Campo Santo Cemetery, which is the second oldest cemetery in San Diego. And what makes the cemetery unique, besides being known as a haunted cemetery, is that the cemetery site actually spills out into what is now San Diego Avenue and Linwood Street behind it. And as you can see, there's even markers on the ground, on the sidewalk. And if we walk out into the road, there are markers in the road as well where graves used to be. And here's the cemetery as it looks today. Now this wall isn't original to the cemetery. It was built in 1933 by the San Diego Historical Society when they kind of tried to restore the cemetery as much as they could. Here's a marker that they put saying that it was restored in 1933. And also there's this plaque on the front of the wall showing where all the grave sites are on San Diego Avenue. And as you can see, there is one right here. And they're all throughout, as you're walking down the sidewalk, you'll find some, and out in the street, you'll find some. Usually there's cars parked here, and the, they're a little bit harder to find on the street because of the cars, but there are grave markers on the street. See another grave site right here. And another grave site here. And it just goes all the way down. Right now they have uh, restaurant uh, seating on top of them so you know you could be eating on top of a grave site if you come to this restaurant but the cemetery was in use from 1849 until 1880 and then by 1889 it was already in disrepair and they built a horse-drawn streetcar line right through it actually where we're standing here what later became San Diego Avenue uh, eventually, San Diego Avenue became part of El Camino Real. You can see the El Camino Real bell here. These bells, the original ones, this is not an original bell, were put up in 1906 all along El Camino Real to promote it. And it later became Highway 101. And San Diego Avenue was part of Highway 101 up until 1933. Now we'll take a look inside the cemetery. And right inside, you'll find the historical marker. The cemetery is on the California Register of Historic Places. And so I mentioned the cemetery had gone into disrepair. By 1933, when the Historical Society built this wall, basically, they had to recreate the cemetery based off of photographs. None of these grave sites, except for one, are the actual grave sites of the people that are buried there for the most part um, are maybe not exactly where they're buried. Um, they used wooden crosses, wooden grave markers a lot back then. Those had all deteriorated. They don't really know who is buried in a lot of these spots. As a matter of fact, a lot with the street and all throughout the cemetery you'll find little markers. They use ground penetrating radar to find the markers. I'm seeing if I could find one here. I know there's one right over here. And as you can see like this little marker right here with a little tag on it with a number. I have to get real close so you can see the number. Uh, that's where a grave site is and, they're, and these are located all throughout the cemetery. Here's another one right here. And as you walk around you'll come across these markers all over the place because that is where the grave sites were. Um, they're lost to history. Who was, who was buried there? I mean, there's a list of names that are buried, but not all of these markers are known who's exactly buried under those markers because, as I mentioned, the cemetery started being in disrepair by the late 1800s. They built a streetcar line through it. Eventually, a road went through it, and... It just kind of lost the time. Now this 
tombstone here was actually standing up. They laid it down so that it didn't get further damaged. But on all the old pictures, this fence and this grave site are here. So they do know that this person, Rosa Serrano de Cassidy, is actually buried here. Now, probably the most famous grave site in here is James W. Robinson, who was known as Yankee Jim. And he's supposedly one of the ghosts that haunt the Whaley House, which is about a block down the street. Um, the Whaley House is known as the most haunted house in America. And Yankee Jim was actually executed on the site that where the Whaley House now stands. Um, he's buried here in the cemetery, and this is his mock-up grave marker for him. Um, he was caught stealing a boat. He went on trial. Um, you know, back then, <laughs> things weren't exactly as they are now. Uh, the people that he stole the boat from were actually on the jury. Um, but he, uh, in a technicality, he was charged with horse theft, even though it was a vote. And he was executed. He actually didn't believe they were going to execute him. But he was executed. He was hung over at the Whaley House location, buried here. Um, so, yeah, he's probably the most famous uh, burial in the cemetery. Um, there's a couple other people who've been executed. There's people that were actually executed here at the cemetery. Uh, we'll get to their graves in a moment. Um, but back here, there's another historically important marker for and here is Juan Maria Osuna um, he was the first mayor of San Diego in 1835 he was also justice of the peace from 1839 to 1840 and in 1846 um, so here's his marker uh, he died in 1851 And then back here is Linwood Street. Much like San Diego Avenue in front, Linwood Street is also filled with grave sites. I'll climb over the fence here. But unlike San Diego Avenue, there are no markers on Linwood Street for any of the grave sites. So their locations aren't marked with markers. But there is a plaque back here showing where they're all located at. But there are no grave sites marked on the street back here. As a matter of fact, even where one of the, mark, the graves would be is this giant bush, an electric box. But there's people that live right across the street. And there's graves all through here. All right, let's climb back over. So I mentioned this was the second official cemetery in San Diego, um, European cemetery, I should say. The first one is off in this direction at Presidio Hill. And then of course, bodies were buried by earlier settlers. You know, they didn't have an official cemetery, but there's bodies buried at Ballast Point and Dead Man's Point, which is now Seaport Village. Here's another marker. You can see another marker here. And here are the grave markers for Bill Marshall and Juan Verdugo. Bill Marshall was an American, Juan Verdugo was a Native American. They took part in a Native American uprising and were executed for it, buried here. Um, they were actually hung here at the cemetery. There was a scaffold set up and they were hung. As you can see, there's quite a few grave markers set up. And I mentioned this place is considered haunted uh, for those who believe in that sort of thing. There's been quite a few uh, Documentary shot here, um, ghost hunter, stuff like that, looking for ghosts. I don't know if they've actually found anything. Like, I don't really watch those programs, but um, been quite a few. 
Um, you can probably look on YouTube here and I know there's videos of people spending the night here and looking for ghosts. Said I don't know if they've actually found anything or not. But with the location being in Old Town San Diego and its notoriety as a haunted cemetery, it is well kept after these days. Um, as you can see, really well taken care of. And I really like all the historical signs giving information on the, some of the people that were buried here, the early San Diegans. It's a local, it's not a ghost, but it's a local lizard. So here's another kind of interesting one. This is Juan Mendoza. Uh, he was shot in the back by Cave Johnson and Coutts, um, who was a famous San early San Diegan. Um, he had threatened Coutts, apparently, and for revenge, he was shot in the back, which was kind of a violation of the Code of the West, shooting an unarmed man in the back. Couts went to trial and was found not guilty because the man threatened his life, apparently. And there are a few of the old tombstones around, but not very many. Just a couple. And there's a few other that are just that are blank. See, nothing is here. I mean, there's not even a marker inside of this fenced area. There's a few others back, but you can see the cement marker in the back is blank. There's also an informational kiosk near the entrance to the cemetery, talking about the history of it, information on the different grave markers, some old photos. And if you go around the back of the kiosk, there's a listing of names of people that are buried in the cemetery. Now, they don't know everyone's name. There are about 450 people buried here. But there is a listing of the names they do know hidden on the back of this kiosk. So that's El Campo Santo Cemetery in Old Town San Diego. If you're visiting the area, it's definitely worth taking a few minutes to stop and Take a look around, learn about some of the people that were buried here. Check out the grave sites that are out on the street. Uh, those were all found with ground penetrating radar in the 1990s after the street was paved over in the 1940s and a streetcar went through there in the 1880s, which is uh, really disrespectful to the people that were buried here if you think about it. But I guess progress had to be made and nine years after the cemetery closed, they decided, hey, let's put a streetcar through here. Um, if you're visiting Old Town San Diego, this is about a block or so down San Diego Avenue from the Whaley House. I think the Whaley House is one of the places pretty much everyone who visits Old Town San Diego goes to check out. Um, it's known as the most haunted house in America. It's about a block further down the street. Um, when you get to it, you can't miss it. It's not really signed very well. There is a wooden sign pointing to it. Um, but you'll see it when you get to it. Um, you might notice the grave markers on the street first, depending on which way you're coming from to get here. But definitely worth checking out, spending a few minutes walking around, learning about some of the people here. And who knows, you may see a ghost or at the least a lizard. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and we'll see you next week.